Hey everyone, I wanted um, to make a video that covered um, kind of just wrapping up the last couple discussion boards um, for the class. Uh, obviously this class is pretty heavy on the discussions and you have to post several times typically each week uh, for them. At the same time, um, it's, you know, it's always a tricky thing from a professor and you know, when, you, when you have so many students that have to post so many times, uh, what is the type of feedback that's helpful? You know, uh, I, I find that in these classes, the, the best way for me to do it is to uh, often, uh, you know, I'll post something and, and comment in the videos of this is where I'm hoping that you will go. So I s s try to set you up at the beginning of the week and give a professor kind of setup for the week. And then after the week, you know, um, some of them don't require as much, you know, culmination as others. Others, you know, I'm going to talk about two of the discussions this week. Um, sometimes they need uh, some input um, and kind of wrapping it all together in things that I wanted I couldn't say during the week because I didn't want to give things away but I, and I wanted to you know let you guys have your your say in it and um, and at the the same time you know sometimes the resources that I post in the videos are helpful as well and give you know other perspectives and sometimes uh, conflicting perspectives and that's the whole idea that you guys are processing through those things so um, this week I want to touch back on um, two of the last uh, discussions in week five and six and what you guys were doing with that um and uh and just as a reminder if you guys don't feel like you got enough uh, uh feedback on the topic from me if you want personal feedback on what you posted you know more than what we're giving because obviously we're not necessarily able to give you back feedback on every single post but i'm trying to get feedback through the videos and through the other things and then showing you we read every single one of your posts so if you're off base or off you know uh, focus we will bring it back but um, yeah so let me know though if you feel like you need more in any way whether it's personal or if my video or comments on on um, on blackboard didn't get into the specifics enough of what you wanted but here in week five you know you were talking about the clean beal book and and uh, uh, you know is there anything you gleaned from it so a lot of its reflection from you you guys could have been all over the map I, I I do know you know some of you commented on some of the personal acts of worship whether it was hand raising or uh, things you're working on in worship some some of you are uh, kind of being vulnerable about things you struggle with and what you want to do more of and that sort of thing um, and uh, I remember someone made the quote um, about joy and it's it's a result of of uh, your worship, not the goal of your worship, um, which which I thought um, you know was a good point that that student made um, from this from the lesson that uh, joy isn't something that is to be the the goal. We don't go to worship in order to get joy. It's a result of entering in to worship. It's a result of of, of it should be a result of your worship. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that and the concept of joy and worship, um, because really this this uh, topic in week five could go anywhere you wanted it to. So it's a you know that topic was one where you basically were able to um, reflect on anything you wanted, and really all of these is you know action items for yourself that you are going to implement. Um, what did I learn through reading this book? I mean, it's it's basically you reflecting on the book itself the content that Klingbell give gave you and now what are you choosing to do with it so there was very little like right and wrong that i could kind of slash or suggest with with what you're posting but i did feel like the concept of joy was something i wanted to expand on and on maybe a little devotional level um and uh, so there's a a, a pastor that i got a little a little uh uh, tidbit article from on this topic that I thought was really good, um, uh, Pastor Johnson, and he he talks about this topic of of joy, and and I love when when people go to to Paul and being in prison um, to to talk about joy because it's just it just gets it just gets right at what Jesus did. You know when Paul talks about his joy in in uh, in the Philippian jail. Now, now you're, we're here in Acts right uh act 16 and it's talking about the philippian jailer which i know a lot of bible students don't put things together but so the book of philippians okay is is this so in acts we see paul and silas in jail in philippi 
Uh, and then the Philippians, the book of Philippians it is this. <laughs> it's it's them in prison and, and it was written out of this. So the book of Philippians is a book of joy. It's all about joy, deep joy of those who are in prison. And so this, this pastor was just sharing about how they went on a, uh, you know, they went overseas and saw that basically that hole. It was a hole in the ground that Paul would have been in the dungeon and, uh, you know, just how depressing and dark and damp and everything that it was and, and how that men were literally dumped down there. And that from that hole was the place that the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Philippians, a book marked with the theme of the most unusual ever topic, which is joy. That's it's in the most unusual topic ever to be written from a prison cell was would be joy, right? Um, that's the Christian life. It's it's completely adverse to the world system. World system is uh, prison, uh, not joy. Uh, heaven system, prison, joy. Figure that out. Well, and that's that's really what what Paul is doing, continuing the work of Jesus to completely recalibrate our minds of what the kingdom is like. In the kingdom you can find your deepest measures of joy in prison. That's pretty amazing. So if you look at this you know, section, even even from, uh, I don't know, 22 down to 28 or so, um, you know, it talks about how the, the crowd joined in attacking them and they were inflicted many blows on them. And having received this order, he put them into the inner prison, fastened them up. And then at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They're worshiping, and the prisoners were listening to them. So even even back, you know, two thousand years ago, the I, the, the oh, singing hymns, praying, worshiping God is an overflow of people that are in love with God. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaking, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he knew he was going to die anyway, and it would probably be a lot more painful if, if he didn't kill himself. So supposing the prisoners had all escaped, and Paul cried out with a loud voice, Don't harm yourself, for we are all here. <laughs> I love that, right? Um, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of read this section of what this pastor wrote. He says in the Acts 16 passage, Paul's joy was to receive the most unusual test. Now, if I'm in prison, there's an earthquake, the chains fall off my arms and legs and doors fling open. I'm saying Jehovah Jireh, God has provided for me again, and I would be getting out of there as fast as I could. It's obvious that this is the will of God. Praise God. My worship worked again. It shook that thing. But not Paul, he says, not Paul. He's worshiping God and the earthquake comes. And it's so powerful it knocks chains off of wrists and feet and knocks them to the ground. The doors fling open and Paul senses, I wasn't a prisoner when I was put in here. He refused to let his circumstances be what defined him, right? And those doors opening don't make me more free. I smell harvest. I smell some fish that are about to be caught, and since my primary goal in life is to catch fish, not escape from prison and stay alive, I'm going to stay in the most unusual fishing hole I've ever been in. Uh, sir, you who are about to kill yourself, you'll notice that we're all here. That was enough of a witness from, uh, from Paul to this jailer. The guard had to know the same Jesus, and he surrendered immediately to Christ. And his entire family then gets saved, if you would read the rest of this passage. There is something endearing and fruitful about supernatural joy like that. And there are a number of examples of joy throughout Scripture, but to me, this is one of the most unique and remarkable illustrations. Uh, this pastor goes on and says, Several years ago, I, I felt impressed to work on three verses of the Bible to see if I could take six months and learn how to do them. The first was Thessalonians 5.16, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I purpose to meditate and practice those three commands because they are all inclusive. I would quote them and I'd think about them as I was going about my day. Rejoice always. I purpose to choose joy and express it in every situation. Some situations are easier than others. And then pray without ceasing. I have to say, I have to stay in communion with the Lord constantly and then in everything give thanks. That's really demanding, obviously, because that means everything, everything give thanks and everything. 
not just the good. There's no room for error there. Do these three things all the time. Be always thankful and always joyful and pray always about everything. People come to me and say, I just need to know God's will for my life. And I tell them, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? Yeah, but I, I need to know whether to take this job or whether I should live here or whether I should live there. It makes very little difference. Uh, if, if you rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks, he says. That's his response. So he goes, basically, pump gas or be a doctor, it doesn't matter. But rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. Yeah, but I don't know what to do for my occupation. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I just said that, right? This is the will of God. All that other stuff is trivial by comparison. It's win-win. Just rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. So I know that there's more to the Christian life that we chew on and process and everything else. But if we just... When you feel overwhelmed and you just want to dumb things down, most of your issues can be taken care of and you're trying to fill out the will of God. God's will for you is joy. It's, it's constant interaction, praying without ceasing, constant interaction with Him by the, by, the, by the person of the Holy Spirit in you and on you. You can have constant, constant exchange with the living God. You can have joy all the time, joy with always, pray without ceasing, and you can be thankful about everything. That's God's will for your life. It's not, it's, I also would like to add to that, this isn't some sort of legalistic rule thing he's thrown at you. This is an invitation. This is what's possible. Have you ever seen a thankful person that's unhappy or that's frustrated at life? Thankfulness is, is the medicine for, for strife, for depression, for everything else. If you're a thankful person, it's really hard to be depressed. And, and I love the fact of, of thanks and joy are, are complementary but different. So rejoice and thanks are both in there, along with the praying without ceasing. That's, you know, that, that, that's the whole, like, I want to be your, your friend. I want to be intimate with you. Uh, I want to be involved in this process. So I just want to throw that in there this week. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. Let that be, let that be your uh, your heart value this week. Then last week, just real quick on on week six, you had this discussion. Um, uh, 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 how God speaks to us, and then and then this concept on on liturgical worship. You know, mo I gave you already some things to process through on that, so I'm not going to go into a lot more detail. But the point is, is that there are certainly ways that God speaks to us. You want to use his word for sure as, as the standard. He's never going to violate his word. He's never going to, he's never going to speak or communicate to you in a way that violates the revelation of who God is that we have in his word. That's why his word is so crucial and so amazing. Um, but when you have his word in you, I think that really lays the foundation for you to be able to pick up on the ways of God and other things. And, and I think there's many, you know, many of us in the church that, that aren't picking up on how God is speaking through other means, partially because we, we haven't picked up his heart through the word, um, but also because we just don't, we, we're almost too hesitant and scared in, in some ways to, to, to say that we're hearing God or communicating with him or picking up on what he's doing through other means. And, uh, and I, and I think that, um, worship is the place that you're, you're, you're making your heart in tune with his. And so that should be a place where not just on a Sunday morning, but anytime that you're entering into worship, which is hopefully as often as possible, that should be a place that he's speaking to you. Um, so, um, that's, that's definitely a fun topic, but not also not one where I'm going to give you necessarily definitive answers. Um, and then the liturgical thing, that's, that's also something I was enjoying seeing kind of some of your interaction on there. And I also already kind of gave you from the get go this week, some thoughts on that and how to, how to, how to frame that thing. So, you know, I think some of you have experienced probably lots of liturgical worship. A lot of you are probably not in uh, churches that do a lot of liturgical stuff. Um, but I, hopefully you're trying, you're starting to appreciate the fact that liturgy by and large was, was put in place for a reason. 
they they have scripture and biblical reasons of everything now some of it can get distracting or it can't be meaningful as it used to but it was there for a reason and i hope that was